RGB fever started in 2015 and since then has become quite an epidemic. More and more things and devices are getting the RGB treatment. RGB keyboards, RGB mice, RGB headphones, RGB motherboards, power supplies, RAM, graphic cards and computer fans and even RGB trackpads. It is a known fact that uh, by mixing red, green and blue in right proportions we can get any other color. But why these three colors specifically? Red, green, blue as it turns out are primary colors and all the other colors are secondary. All the secondary colors can be derived by mixing the primary colors but you cannot derive red, green, blue by mixing any other colors. We have mainly two different kinds of RGB LEDs. One of them is just the amalgam of the three different colored LEDs into a single package and the other one has an inbuilt controller along with the three different colored LEDs. We can find all of these in individual LED modules or in form of LED strips and also LED matrices. Let's look at the RGB LEDs which do not have the integrated controllers. These ones combine red, green and blue, all the three colors into a single package. They have four terminals and one of them is a common. This one has a common anode. The other three leads are the cathodes of the respective colors. They can light up red, green, blue or any of the combination above. As of now we can get seven different colors. Blue, green, cyan, red, purple, yellow and white. That's only seven colors but how do we get all the different colors? We can do that by mixing red, green and blue at different brightness. A very crude example here. To change the brightness I have three different potentiometers in series with uh, each of the color. As I change the resistance the brightness of each color varies and I change the resistance the brightness of each color varies and we see the gradient of colors. But this is very inefficient. Let's bring in our beloved Arduino into the game. We can get the same results by varying the brightness of each color by using a technique called PWM. Now what's PWM? That's a topic for another video. In simple terms, switching on and off the LEDs at very high speed. The longer the on time, the brighter the LED. The Arduino can produce a variable PWM out of its six pins. We will be needing three of them, one for each color. The function analog right is used to produce PWM signal. It takes two arguments, the pin number and a number between 0 to 255. This number determines the brightness of the color, 0 being off and 255 being completely on. So the brightness of all the three colors can be set from 0 to 255. That makes it, that makes for a total of 16 million combinations, that is 16 million colors. From producing different colors, we can move on to making cool animations like this breathing effect. When you are using many of these LEDs in parallel, the Arduino itself cannot pro provide enough current for all of these LEDs. So a suitable transistor circuit should be used for uh, the PWM switching with a separate power supply. You can also find these LEDs in form of strips which come with uh, the control circuit built in and also come with the infrared remote uh, to set the colors. Let's look at the WS2812 LEDs. These are by far the most popular programmable LEDs. Every single LED module has an integrated chip inside. These LEDs also have a total of four pins. VCC, ground, data in and data out. Here again you need to tell the LED module the brightness of each color R, G and B from 0 to 255. This brightness data is sent using an Arduino. These LEDs use a one wire protocol. Data is sent on a single wire. There is no accompanying clock signal. The brightness of each color can be set from 0 to 255. 
this uh, comes to 8 bits in binary and a total of 24 bits for the three different colors. This 24 bits has to be sent to the LED. 1 and 0 are encoded with uh, different timings for this one wire protocol. This precise timing is quite tricky to achieve on an Arduino without using the manual uh, port commands or using assembly language. The digital write function is too slow. We can program these by using uh, different libraries which are available. Uh, I used a library called FastLED. This is a very popular uh, library and works really well. Using the library is quite easy once you go through the documentation. I will have it linked down below in the description. Another cool thing about the WS2812 LEDs is that they can be daisy chained and you can individually control all of them. The data out of one LED module feeds into the data in of the another one. You can specifically light up individual LEDs and hence create crazy animations. You guys should definitely download the fast LED library and try it out. If you, if you need more help setting up the library, you can comment down below and I'll make a separate video. Uh, I think now you know enough to join the hippie RGB trend. What would you add RGB to? Comment down below. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.